Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and it is April the 3rd at 6.30 in the evening. And we are going to sell clothing and wool and possibly cloth. So that is uh, the plan to start the episode, and we should make some pretty decent money from it. So uh, let's grab our shorter trailer. And I was thinking, too, about something. Well, first of all, um, look at what's in the sale. Uh, we've got a Massey Ferguson medium tractor there. Uh, they can go up to 280, but we don't, we're really, we don't really need another tractor at the moment. Um, I was thinking about this though. This is an auger grain cart, uh, or a chaser, chaser cart. We don't technically need it right now, but it is my intention to expand our grain operations, um, significantly as time goes on. And uh, at some point, it would probably be useful to, to use these um, so that you can load multiple trailers and keep the combine going uh, while the trailers are in the field. Um, but it doesn't, it, we can't use it with, with silage or more specifically with grass or chaff. Um, and it doesn't work with beets either. So I don't know. I'm probably going to pass on it, even though it is kind of tempting uh, to, to do, but I think we'll pass on it. Uh, there's also a sugar beet harvester. Now, this is something we might want to think about. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, we're not going to have a massive sugar beet operation. We're just going to have enough, you know, to keep our factory going. And I think probably be in light of that, leasing uh, these vehicles for the time, you know, when the time comes to harvest is probably going to make more sense for us. Um, 174000 we would definitely want GPS on this. So that would bring us up to 189. We can almost pay cash for this right now. I don't know. I mean, it's tempting. I got to say it's tempting. This, what is this? This is the Panther two. Um, whoops. Let's see what, what else is available in beat technology? Okay. So this is the smallest of the beat uh, harvesters. And that holds 30,000 liters. That holds 45, 43. That's, oh, that's just, that just collects them off the ground. Okay. So, I mean, if I was going to do this, I'd almost rather have the Tiger 65 because it's got, you know, quite a bit more uh, space in it. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's not, let's not do anything with that right now. This one hat comes with a built-in header. The problem with this, though, is it's it's very, you know, relatively narrow. <clears throat> you know, the header is on this grim. So, okay. Anyway, um, oh yeah, we're gonna look at something else though in the store. Uh, I think it's in the low loader category. Eh, maybe not. I was thinking about upgrading to a nicer flatbed trailer for using with the pickup. And there's a gooseneck trailer that would work well with that. I just got to find it. Um, I wonder if it's a mod, though. This is just a cargo cart. No, that's that's too little. I I thought it would be in, in low loaders, but I'm not seeing it here. Is it possibly under normal trailers? Let's look in here. No, these are more like bin types of trailers, I think. Lick, lick wit trailer. <laughs> um, wow, that can go up to twenty five thousand liters. Hmm. How many? How much does our other trailer uh hold? This guy. Twenty four thousand or no thirty two thousand? Yeah, okay. I've seen that pop up on sale uh, a few times too. So the next time that happens, we might end up actually getting that. All right. Well, I think the trailer that I was considering is probably a mod because I saw another YouTuber using it. Because uh, I'm not seeing it here in the base game. And here's, again, this is where I thought it was going to be. We have the, the Demcos because uh, those came on sale. All right. Well, yeah, let's, let's not worry about that for now. Uh, I'll look, look 
for it later in uh, on Mod Hub, uh, but I wanna I don't want to do that right now. So we'll just use what we have. Okay, so let's get our trailer hooked up, and then uh, we're gonna load clothes, wool, and cloth. I think those are the three April things. With clothes, of course, being what's gonna make us some good money, and then we'll look at our money at the end of the month when we're finished with that. Oh. Oh. Here, I'm just going to do it this way. <laughs> My camera, camera's doing some weird stuff there. Or I mean my head tracker, I should say. All right, let's just check the prices again and see who's going to buy these from us. Uh, so we're looking for clothes. We have uh, Mama Joe's Mini Mart and Grocery Mart. Grocery Mart's giving the best price. And again, April is the time to sell. So 10, uh, 10 273 was last year's high price. This year is just a little less, but still not too bad. Okay, now, what about fabric? Fabric, OG's tailor shop. No, we're not selling to our own shop. Um, so, also, that would go to the grocery store. And what about straight-up wool? So, we got lots of extra wool. That would go, let's see, you got 1188, 1217. That would go to Mama Joe's Farmer's Market. And Mama Joe's doesn't take the other products. So we should be able to load all, everything up all in one shot here. Yeah, okay. So let's go here. And, oh, no, I don't have to open that. Just do this. We want to go to close. Click OK and unload all pallets. That's a That's about $140,000 right there guys, even more than that cuz each pallet is $10,000. Woohoo, nice. Okay, let's get that loaded. Love it. And the trailer starts drifting there. Um What was the key I can, I, I can never remember what the key is to do partial pallets for universal load. Universal auto load. Tar, oh, it's zero for toggle toggle loading filter. Right. Okay. There we go. Okay. And now I don't know if we have any clothes in here because they're, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, cloth in here because I think it's all being distributed to the uh, from the spinnery to the tailor but let's look our fabric yeah we have a little bit of fabric in here okay so let's unload whatever we have in here uh, but most of it is going to be over at the spin uh, the tailor shop and we have excess that we could oh you know what though? I don't think we can pull it out of there can we oh, man I didn't think about that um Oh, can we? I don't know. Let's go let's go look. Let's go look. I think we're a little too far away to Oh, for goodness sakes. Okay. See, that's why I don't like this trailer. <laughs> I want to get rid of this stupid trailer. I mean, it's it's been a good trailer for us. We've gotten a lot of mileage out of it, so I I shouldn't complain, but I just don't like the dolly on the back of it when you're trying to back up. So we'll just manually put that there. Alright. Let's go over to... Uh, yeah, you know what though? We're not... We're not going to be able to pull the fabric back out of the tailor shop. I really wish we could do that, but I don't think we can. Because all we can pull out of the tailor shop is the clothes that are finished, and we already should have all of those. 
and I don't think the spinnery, you know what I need to do is a couple of months out is I need to stop distributing so that way it starts to accumulate for us. Um, let's just look over here for a second. Yeah, it's got one liter of fabric in there. That's not even worth messing with. Okay, well, again, we'll know for next time. That's too bad, though, because, you know, we probably could have made another, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 off of the excess cloth. So, again, I just need to remember to do that for next time. And, you know, maybe I probably won't. <laughs> I'll try, but you know how I am, right? Uh, however, we do have a nice big old batch of wool that we can sell. And, you know, we we already have a lot of wool and cotton still in the spinnery. Um, see, I mean, it's it's almost, it's over half full of wool, and it still has a bunch of that cotton left over too. So we can definitely sell this excess wool, uh, which we are going to do. So let's pull up here. A little too far away from that other one. What about right here? Okay, so it's saying we're too full. But we can at least put some on here. It doesn't look like it wants to strap down on the pickup. Well, you know what, though? I, we're there's no way we're going to get all of this anyway, so we'll just have to come back for it. That's fine. Okay, so the clothing is going to the grocery store. And the cloth is going to... It's either the cloth or the wool that was going to the farmer's market. Can't remember now. Let's look again. Um, the wool is going to Mama Joe's farmer's market. And the cloth is, or the fabric is going to uh, also, uh, yeah, also to the grocery store. So let's just go to the grocery store first. One thing I've noticed is um, the Giants definitely changed the way braking works with this latest update. You need a lot more time to break. And I know there was a mod out uh, before that that did that too because the braking was like so all of a sudden. But it looks like they've now built that into the end because I never actually downloaded that mod. <laughs> so it, I'm okay with it because it's more realistic. It's just that I'm not used to it. I'm used to being able to brake so quickly. 134,217 dollars and 99 percent of that was the clothing very nice money very very nice money okay i love it you got to think too you know sheep in particular are like probably the easiest animal to take care of all you got to do is give them hay or grass and that's it there's just absolutely nothing else you need to do and it, and they don't even go through the, you know, their their feed very quickly either. So that's a pretty good deal, man. All right, you know what? Let's go back and see if we can get all of the wool on here. So that way we can sell everything in one fell swoop. We're not going to make the same money off of this wool that we did off the clothes, but it still should be, you know, substantial. I'm I'm thinking here. Okay, can I offload and then reload to get everything all consolidated together? There we go. Okay. And I might even redo these guys too. 
that should snap on there. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's just put it on there like that. Okay, if, well those, yeah, see those don't unload because they're not technically on there. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't want to do that last pallet. Okay. That's really, that's interesting. All right, we're in business. So this we're taking to MJ's Farmer's Market. Nice load of wool there. Yes, indeed. Actually, you know what? Let's check the price again just to make sure because they can change and we've seen it. We're looking for wool. 1217. Yep. Okay. $15,630. Okay. Nice. So that brings uh, our bottom line up to $332,941. Make you holler. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's very, very nice to have that massive greenhouse operation because we basically have money coming in every month. Um, just coming in, you know. Uh, we not not free of course we put a huge investment in it and we still ha will have substantial work and investment to keep keep it stocked with you know the seeds and all that but so far it's worked out great okay let's double check and make sure there isn't anything left in august or i'm sorry not august april that we would want to sell i don't think there is but we'll check anyway um eggs is not good for april what about milk milk is not good for april uh we're not interested in any of that stuff flour and bread and cake and butter and cheese are all not good in april um I, i'm i'm hoping you know once we get sugar beets going we'll have sugar to sell too and that's going to be an august item and i think that's it. Chocolate. Chocolate's actually good next month. Okay. So we'll have to we'll have to remember that. We'll have to sell chocolate next month. And I think that's all we have that we would sell. Okay, cool. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, you know what? I'm very tempted to do at least field 71. Because this is the big hay field. We can knock it out really quickly. I know I said <laughs> I wasn't going to do contracts anymore, but, you know, this one is in particular is so worth doing. Not only because we get almost $22,000 from it, but we also get, you know, some extra, uh, in this case, hay for our own use. <sighs> Yeah, I, I think I'm going to do this, you guys, uh, but I'm not going to do all of the hay contracts. I'm just going to do field 71. And, you know, same thing with the fertilizer, too. They're so quick and easy to do. I, I said I wasn't going to do this anymore, but look at the money from that for such an easy job. Um, I don't know, though. I mean, I'll tell you what, let me know in the comments if if you were me right now. Knowing that we have, we're averaging $120,000 a month coming in from those greenhouses, not counting, you know, any of our other productions that we're selling, you know, it's, it's a, it's a time thing, right? It's a time thing. This is pretty darn good money, but it's going to take me time and I'm going to have to probably buy some granular fertilizer to do all of these. This is not just about the money here. This is also about us getting some extra hay that which which we need. We're not super low on hay, but we're we're lowish. So there's you know there there's more reasons to do this than just the fertilizing contracts. So you know, let me know what you guys would do if you were me in my current situation. Um, because you know I want to move things along more quickly and not spend so much time on these contracts each year like I have up to this point. 
But uh, if you were me, just let me know what you do and why. Uh, I'm, ju I'm just curious to hear from you. But for now, we're just going to do Field 71. That's all. We're not going to do anything else. And we are will we will, of course, borrow the, their stuff because there's no reason not to. And we're just going to get that knocked out really quick. And what I think I might even do with this is... See, he wants hay, so we are going to have to bail and Ted and do all that kind of stuff. We might be able to... Well, there's a few things we could do. We could we could use um, course play. Uh, definitely could use course play. Um, or I could try a, a follow me train where I'm mowing. I got a dude following behind bailing. Well, no. No, no, we'd have to have a tether following behind. And then and then we'd have to have... We could put a baler behind the tether with the V-Rake on. Ooh. And get cutting, tetting, and baling all done in one pass. It would probably be kind of messy, and I'd have to go back and do some cleanup, but then, then again, when do I not have to go do that? You know what I'm saying? So... That might be interesting, interesting to try. Now, we could also do course play, but the, but the thing about course play is you're not doing it all in one shot, you know? Course play would be more accurate, though. So I could get the mower started and then get the tether going and then get the baler going after that. But I'm kind of thinking if we did course play we would, and we want it to be accurate, we'd have to also do a windrowing pass, which I want to avoid because we have the V-rake. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to have the tether follow the mower. And I'll have the AI do the mowing and tedding, and I will follow along behind in the baler with the V-rake. I think that's going to be the most efficient way to do it. Okay, yeah, I like this idea. Okay, so let's go. Let's go get set up for all that, and we'll give it a try. All right, guys, we are at the field, and I got everybody staged. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to course play the field first, and then you know, and get all that done, and then I'll come around at the very end and and grab some of the hay on the on the border rather than do it the other way around. Um, so. That being the case, let's hop in here. I don't remember if I set up a course play course for this field, but I want to try something else too. So even if I did, I didn't do this. So we're going to go into a uh, course play menu here. And what I want to do is we're going to create a new course. And we're going to make this a, I'm going to try a center spiral course. And I don't think we're going to do a headland. Rose to skip, rose per land, island bypass mode. So if, if we set a headland, then it starts work on the headland. If we don't set a headland, then it should start from field center. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between spiral and racetrack. But I think it's spiral that we want. Yeah. Okay, so let's generate the, the course. I wonder if that's going to cause a problem without a headland, though. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? Uh, so let's um, let's just. I'm not going to save this course because I'm not sure how well it's good. Well, no, actually, hold on. We do have to save the course. Yeah, we have to save the course because I I'm going to assign the same course to the tether. All right. So field 71. So it looks like I did do a hay harvest in 71. Okay. So what I'm going to do is save this course here. And we're going to call this F71 Spiral and Center. And again, I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're just going to try it and see what happens. All right. So for you, you start at nearest waypoint and go to it. 
Let's just see what he does. Looks like he's going to start here. Because he wouldn't... Hmm. Okay, yeah, well... Yeah, let's just see what he does. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to get the tether started on the same course. I wonder how well that's going to work, though, because the tether is quite a bit wider. Maybe we should have the tether do its own course, now that I think about it. Because this is way wider than the swath. Yeah, we, we need to have the tether do its own course. Yeah, <laughs> look at the width on this thing. Okay. You know what, though? I, I want to... Let's just see what the mower does first before we get the tether going. So let's just hop in the mower and ride with him and see what he's going to do here. All right, that's weird. See, I would have thought he would have come to the center of the field and then started there, because that's sort of what we told him to do. really doing some weird stuff. Let's turn the course on. Yeah, I don't I don't get that. How is that a spiral? And it looks too like he's got a bunch of travel time that where he's not mowing, which also makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. Even if even if it does make some kind of sense, which I'm not seeing really, it's extremely inefficient because of all the travel time, you know, and how slow he goes when he's doing that travel time. So we're not going to do this. I suppose if we wanted him to do a spiral in the way that I would do a spiral, we would just tell him to do a crap ton of headlands. Yeah, you know what? I didn't think about that, huh? Because, look, he, again, he's got travel time here where he's not mowing. Bring up the course generator. Okay, so what we want to do, uh, and here we'll just start on the headland. And it says we can do up to 40 headlands. So I don't know how many headlands this field will do. Well, let's just put in 40 and see what it does. Could not generate a course. The log may have more information. Okay, probably because that's too many. Let's try it with 30. Okay, so it did 10. And that looks about right, really. Because once you get into the center, you're, you know, it, it, it doesn't hope make a lot of sense to keep looping. So I kind of like that setup right there. Okay, so let's have him start the job but what I'll do is I'll now nah, you know what I think I'm gonna just let him run the whole course from the start just because oh he's gonna go that way now yeah let's just let him run it all the way from the start so this is more like my idea of, of a spiral Okay, guys, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the mower get a few rows into this before I start the tether. Because the tether is so wide that I don't want the tether, you know, clashing with the mower. So I'll bring you guys back when we start the tether. All right, guys, so um, the mower has just finished the fourth row. So what I'm going to do now is get the windrower going. I know this isn't what I had originally planned. I was originally going to do follow me. And I might still try that, but 
For that to work, we would need to use a smaller tether because the wider tether is just going to cause problems uh, if we try and do it that way. Okay, so we're going to basically use the same exact settings uh, for this guy. Uh, well, no, we're not. We're going to have him do his own course because he's a lot wider working with. So let's get him on the course here. And... Uh, Go here, <clears throat> and we're doing 10 headlands. Start work on headland smooth. Generate the course for you. If this, if I feel like this works out really well for the future, um, oh, actually, does he need 10? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it didn't actually generate 10. You know, then I'll save these courses and just use them. Okay, start job. Okay, whoops. And that, whoop. <laughs> now I'm going to follow along in the, well, you know what though? Because we're not doing up and downs, there's not going to crash. There's not going to be a chance for them really to crash into a tree, at least not theoretically, right? So I bet you I could do the bailing automatically too. Let's just try it. I still might do it myself just because, you know, I need something to do too. There isn't anything else. If, if there was something else I could be doing right now, well, I guess I could be doing fertilizer contracts, huh? Hmm. Okay, well, here. Let's just let's just see how well this actually might work. So I'm also going to see if the worker's smart enough to lower the the V rake by himself or herself. But I want to make sure that the baler is on the large size 240. And it is. Okay. So let's go into course play. And again, same idea. We're just going to go uh, 10 headlands and generate the course. And that looks pretty good. Okay. And then have him start the job. He is lowering the V-Rick. Look at him. All right. Good for him. This might actually work quite well, you guys. <laughs> Look at that. That's fantastic. Oh, you know what I can do? I can just follow along and pick up the bales. Uh, I could also automate that, but again, I kind of need something to do myself, right? So, yeah, that's what we'll do. This is actually working out pretty good so far. We'll just see what happens, you know, when we get to the very end of things, though. It's getting getting late too because that's right we started this episode late in the day now again you can also automate the pickup and I think I've demonstrated that with course play too but I might as well just do that part myself right that way we can keep the bales cleared off the field and they won't get in anybody's way not that they should anyway because everybody's working from the outside in look at that v rig is working beautifully we completely have to re or remove the need to windrow because the V-Rake is essentially doing the windrowing. I love it. Okay. And we'll just... And, uh, of course, you know, I'll have to do some border work and some cleanup work at the end, but that's typically always been the case no matter what, you know, which method I'm using to, you, you know, try these little automated things. Very cool. All right, you guys. Well, um, I will bring you back with an update here in a little while and see how we're doing. All right, the mower is finished. So what I'm going to do here is this guy's almost full. I could put him on follow me with an offset, but once he gets completely full, he'll still still keep going and cause problems. I could also just do this if we go. Now, I don't know how accurate this is going to be. 
But if we give him the same, um, course, wait a second. Yeah, course. Why doesn't it let me open up the course generator? Collecting wrapping bales. Oh, do I not have to give him a course for that? Does he just know what to do? Oh, that's interesting. Let's just watch him for a second. Because uh, if this works, then I'm going to turn him loose and jump in the mower and then start getting the the borders and the cleanup stuff going. Let's just see if, if he is smart enough to know to go grab this next bale. So, it, it, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so it looks like if you set this... On collecting wrapping bales. Well, I didn't even set that. Course Blade just detected that that's what he was going to do. You don't even have to give him a course. That's pretty smart. The only downside to this, though, is he could, unless there's some kind of avoidance on, he might he could run into one of the other workers if they happen to be coming around. Very neat, though, man. Now, you know what we could else we could do? Oh, are we completely full? Okay. Yeah, we are. We could also set up an auto drive course to go drop the hay off at the location. I don't whoops, I don't think I'm gonna do that this time around, but you know, for the future, we could do that. Um so let's see, what do I what am I looking for? I'm looking for the contract. And this needs to go to animal dealer. Yeah. Um, we definitely could do that. Absolutely could do that. But I don't think I'm going to mess with it this time around. I'm just going to use the normal AI uh, to have him go to Animal Dealer. Okay, so let's just do a set destination. And you just go ahead and stage yourself right here. And then I'll take it from there once you get there. But Auto Drive would definitely work with that too. Okay, so let's send him on his way. AI worker B is blocked by an object. Who's AI worker B? Oh, that was probably that guy. Um, I, I think I was in his way. Okay, let's jump in a mower. And it looks like I need to reset my head tracker. Definitely need some lights on here. He missed a little strip there, but not a problem. We can handle that. Also, let's turn the this off. And since we're just tedding all this, we don't have to do this in any kind of like little neat pattern. We just got to cut it. So yeah, this is working quite well. Very well indeed. It might be faster to do the follow me train and we really should try it at some point just to see. But the nice thing about this is, you know, course play is doing most of the thinking and I, you know, I don't. Plus, you know, auto draw or follow me is just follow. I mean, there's no calculations or intelligence involved with it and that does present it can present its own problems okay so I'm gonna go along now and, and snag the border like you I usually do on this field and let's um put the mower out this wide I'm pretty sure we'll be able to pull all that in with the v-rake if not, worst case scenario is we get the big windrower to pull it in. But I think the V-Rake will be able to do it. Okay, now let's just get the, the corners. Our driver has arrived at Animal Dealer too, so we have to deal with him.
could even just do this from the center out, I'll bet. It doesn't matter that some of this will not be tatted because it'll just combine with the hay. Looks like the tether is finished. There really almost isn't anything that was missed over here. That does such a better job, you know, than the than the default AI can can do. I'm impressed. All right, I think we're finished with the mower, and the nice thing about this is since we're doing everything on field 71 with that farmer stuff we don't have to fuel fuel it up or clean it up it's only if we're borrowing it for other things um, okay so let's turn this off I want to go let's get the tether off the field or out of the way so the motor uh, baler doesn't run into him I think that's this one here Um, we could even actually run this over a couple of these spots. I don't think we really need to, though. Yeah, you know what? We don't need to. I'll keep the, the tether here just in case, but... It should be fine without having to do that. Well, you know what, though? We do have to ted... Yeah, we are going to have to ted the border. That's right. So, that's got to get done no matter what. But before we do that, let's go drop off our first load of hay and I'll just get this guy staged over here. Okay, so we wanna go to Animal Dealer. Here. So in the future, I'll probably add an auto drive course for this part of it to automate this too because why not right why not okay that's the first load now I'm curious to try something let's get him back out on the road And is he is course play smart enough to drive him all the way back to the field without our help? Um, so what we want to do is collect wrap bales. Um, go here. We should just tell him to go to seventy one. So that's going to be field position, and then start job. Generate a course before starting. Oh, okay. Doesn't look like it. Looks like he has to be on the field. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so let's just have the default AI bring him back onto the field. Um, and we'll just kind of have him stage right here for now. Okay. So the bailing's probably just about done. We have a little bit of tedding to do. So let's get that done first. Okay, that should take care of the tedding. Our dude is back. Uh, our bale pickup guy's back too. So we're gonna turn him loose again and then we'll jump in the baler to finish up because the baling is just about done anyway yeah he's he's just about done so we're gonna go ahead and cancel him and well no actually let's let's let him go a little bit further while we get the bale pickup guy started again which is you. Okay. 
So all we should have to do here is just turn him on and let him go do his thing. Cool. Okay, back to you. You're blocked by an object. This, you know, this is really cool, you guys, because this is the first, this is the first um, problem we've had with this whole thing. It's worked super smooth up to this point. So I'll take it. Let's just move some of these out of the way here. Okay, so we want to start everybody, lower everybody, and we'll do the angled, angled uh, parts first here. I have noticed there's qu there's a, quite a few tiny little patches that didn't get picked up either, but I'm not really too concerned about that. Because overall, again, it's just this has worked super well. Yeah, we'll worry about grabbing that later. I mostly just want to stay out of the way of the bale pickup guy. Okay, so now I'm going to go along the border and pull in all of this grass as much as I can anyway. Yeah, there's spots on that corner in particular that can be a little finicky. But, you know, I'm, I'm eventually going to buy this field, maybe even sooner rather than later, and then it won't matter. We are going to massively expand it, too, when we do buy it. There's so much wasted um, land here, you know. All right, so we are 74% on the way to the next bale. So my plan now is to just pick up um, as much of you know what's left over to get that last bale, but I'm not going to clean the entire field because it's not going to be worth it for us to do that. We definitely won't get two more bales. Um, so all we would be doing is wasting time picking up stuff, and then we'd lose it anyways once we turn the, the baler in. So hopefully this corner here will give us the majority of what we need. Okay, there we go. We got our last bale. I'll pick this up for good measure just so it's not sitting on the field the next time, but we're not going to get another bale out of it, so and I'm <coughs> excuse me, I'm not going to worry about the the little spots over on that end of the field. If they end up staying there for a while, they end up staying there for a while, but we'll eventually get them when we own the field, so it's all good, man. I got us 33% more of a bale, but there is there's no way there's enough hay left on this field to to get another bale, so it's just not worth our time. All right, so let's turn this off and let's spit out these two bales. And we'll fold that up. Fold that up. We need to take this tractor uh, back to our farm because uh, it's got RV rake on it, but everything else we could just leave out in the field and let the farmer come and get it once we turn in. Okay, so uh, we're back and a couple things. There's still one more bale there to pick up, and I have a full load, and that is all our hay because 
we completed the contract. You, you can see this completed here. So we turned all the hay in that the contract required. So we have a full uh, auto trailer load of hay, which is fantastic. Uh, and then some. Also, I, uh, I forgot that there was a whole other corner of hay over there that needed to be picked up. So we might be able to actually get another bale uh, in doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this off here. And we got a nice little supply of hay, man. So 15 bales in total. And it takes one and a half, about one and a half bales per load for our current uh, cows. So basically seven-ish seven, seven -ish loads of TMR. Well, for the hay part of it anyways, for doing that. So well worth it. Next time it'll it should you know go even smoother. Okay, let's just get the uh, V rake put away, and then we'll be ready to turn this in completely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep until May first, and that way show you the total finances for April before we wrap up the episode. So I will see you tomorrow morning on May first. All right, guys, welcome to May first. It's eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, we got a cloudy morning, but it's going to be sunny later. Um, right after I left you guys go last night, it started raining. So <laughs> we got that haying done just in the nick of time. Not that it really matters for contract hay, though. Excuse me. Okay, so let's take a look at our finances for April and uh, see where we're sitting. Okay, so we didn't purchase anything new. Uh, 1726 in vehicle running. Leasing costs, because uh, we're currently leasing the... Um, one of the rollers and also the, the larger uh, plow. Um, what's it called? Some, the lizard subsoiler plow, the big nine meter or eight meter one. So I'm leasing that to own. I think I already talked to you guys about that. Uh, did I? I don't know. Did I? If I didn't, let's look at it real quick. I went ahead and I'm pretty sure I did. But anyway, I leased, I'm leasing this uh, nine meter subsoiler pl uh, slash plow. And it's what I used to create the little field around our, our new greenhouse property to add some extra hay to it. So we're, we're just leasing to own this unless it comes on sale before, uh, you know, before then, in which case we'll, we'll return the lease and buy it if it makes sense to do so. Okay, so yeah, that's what that's for. All right, property maintenance is eighteen ninety three. dollars uh, Production costs $8.53. Uh, we made just $210 on a partial sold bale, uh, 15,630 on wool, which was nice. Uh, we made a total of $245,336. This includes both the clothing that we sold and the greenhouse, uh, the money that we get from the greenhouse. Uh, so that's wonderful. Uh, fuel cost 123, water cost 620. Uh, we got 20,118 from the contract income. We paid out uh, 2,110 in wages. Miscellaneous came to 11,480. Uh, what did we do for that to come to 11,480? I don't remember. I think it probably had something maybe to do with when we were building the bridges and the, and the silos and then pit, putting them down and picking them back up. Because we don't, you know, we no longer deduct money for our worker because that's happening automatically here. Uh, incidentally, that's that setting or the factor that we have set is taking out thirty six seventy five. I'm happy with that. I think we're just going to keep at that, and that's pay, basically paying our our greenhouse manager. Um, in reality, with as many greenhouses as we have and as large as our farm is, we we'd probably have more than just one full time farm hand. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to keep it this way for now. Uh, if we, if I, if I ever do like a super realistic playthrough, which I might, you know, then we would worry about that quite a bit. But for now, I, I think, you know, we're just going to do it this way anyway. So that uh, left us with a profit of $257,349 in April. That was a very, very good month for us. And we are currently sitting at uh, $369,751. Let's look at the sales really quick before I let you go. 
Uh, it's the same stuff that we had before. How old is this Massey? It's 24 months, so it's really pretty darn new. Um, we would we would want the GPS and we'd want the large engine, which would make it 280 horse, and that'd bring us up to 130. So we could certainly afford to do this. I'm just, I don't know, do we need to do it is the question. It's a very nice looking tractor, isn't it? It's beautiful. I don't think we need to, guys. I really don't. I don't think we need to, so we're not going to. We're going to just hang on to our money for now. And we already talked about the Panther too. We don't want that. If if we if we buy a sugar beet harvester at all, it's going to be the big one. So yeah, I think that is it. So I'm going to let you guys go here. Uh, I'm going to do my May chores. I'm probably just going to blow right on through May. Um, there's probably going to be yeah, there's going to be some fertilizing contracts. But again, I'm I'm just gonna kind of get away, try and get away from contact contracts, except for Field 71. I I do think it's worth our our time to do Field 71 because of the money and the the extra hay it provides us, or silage if it happens to be a silage contract. So we'll probably keep doing 71, but I don't think we're gonna be doing much of the other contracts, at least for not right now. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I'll do my May chores and probably bring you back on um, June 1st and we get to harvest our barley on June 1st. It's going to be awesome. We'll get to use our brand new, well, not brand new, but new to us, uh, top of the line Kloss combine that's in, sitting in the barn over there. And we need to get a header for it too. <clears throat> and I'll probably, uh, one of you guys mentioned to look at, I think they're called the honeybee headers or some, some something like that. I'll, I'll take a look at those and either between those or just buying the Kloss header that goes with that, uh, we will make that purchase and then uh, harvest our barley next month. It's going to be cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.